Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Hi there once again, Growing in Grace, the podcast. Mike Kapler with Joel Brzezinski. Um, we're, we're moving through the month of December here pretty fast. Uh, it's been uh, another one of those crazy years for a lot of people, probably. Maybe not quite as much as 2020, Joel, but uh, uh, we were talking last week about all the things that go on around us and the, the circumstances in our lives. And, and this is kind of an escape hatch for you here, growingingrace.org, where you can find all of our past archived programs. Uh, just to remind you, of what really matters in, in life, and that's uh, the truth of the gospel, and, and taking that message from the gospel and being able to use it uh, in some way, shape, or form in our everyday lives. Right, and um, Merry Christmas. There, they said it. There's our Christmas <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I didn't even know you could still say that. I, I have got to get out more often. <laughs> Yeah, you talking about moving through December, and I guess by the time we post after this week, by the time our next one is posted, Christmas will have passed. So a lot of times we'll do a Christmas podcast. I guess we didn't really discuss it a whole lot this time, but and we're not doing it this year, I guess, and that's fine. <laughs> well, we, I mean, you know, we're we're coming up on Christmas, right? I mean, next week, is, this next week is Christmas. Oh, that's true. It's the yeah Saturday will be, and then Sunday yeah. will be will be wrestling day. I mean, Boxing Day. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're getting way off. We could, so we, yeah, we could um, hypothetically still do something. <clears throat> but yeah, forgiveness. I mean, this whole issue, am, am I forgiven? Um, we did a podcast a while back. How do, how do I know that I'm forgiven? And maybe I'll post a link to that um, when we post this. Because it's, it's, it's an issue that people deal with. They just... They, um, because of works, it, it always goes back to when a person questions their salvation or they question whether they're forgiven, it goes back to the fact that they know they've done some things that are ungodly, that aren't right. And so I guess a question that comes up is, do our works disqualify us? And toward the end of last week's podcast, Cap, you mentioned that no, it doesn't. It's, it, it's the works works both ways, as you said it. Works neither save us, nor do they cause us to be condemned, nor do they cause us to lose our salvation or, or to lose our standing with God, because, and the reason for this is because it's all based upon the work of Christ. It's not based upon our works. You could do all the good works in the world. I mean, you could work Every you know, your whole life just full of good works, and Paul still says it's not of works, <laughs> lest anyone should boast. You're not saved because you've done a whole bunch of of good things, and at the same time, Paul says therefore in in Romans eight there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and you know the reason for that is because the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Uh, we've been set free from the condemnation that came through the law of works, the condemnation that came through, as Gentiles, our own conscience and the, the evil things that we do. Um, that in Romans 1, Paul talks about how it's, it's evident. God has revealed to everybody what his ways are, what he's like, and no one's without excuse. But those bad works, formerly, yeah, they would have disqualified us because... We didn't have the finished work of Christ yet, but now that we have the finished work of Christ, the salvation issue, the forgiveness issue, the right standing with God issue, the redemption issue, the forgiveness of sins, everything, 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 everything is based upon the work of of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice. He sacrificed, he, he offered himself for your sins. He did it willingly. He wasn't coerced. He did it freely because of his great love. Because of God's great love for us, that's why it happened. That's why we've been forgiven. 
That's why we've been saved. It has nothing to do with how you feel about yourself and your works and your goodness or your badness. It all has to do with the work that Jesus Christ has done. I could go on talking about that forever because I, I, need, to, I need to hear it a lot. I I can have a tendency sometimes to revert back to how well I'm performing, even though I've been learning about this and and sharing it with others for quite some time. Um, So I know that I I love sharing with other people, too, so that people can be sure of their salvation, the forgiveness issue, because of what Christ has done. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, recently, uh, you read where Paul wrote, uh, it's Christ Jesus who, who is our peace. He, he is our peace, and we, we have peace with God because of the gift of righteousness, because we're, we're saved by grace through faith. It's by faith that we have peace with, with Christ. And, and what does that mean? We'll get into that here in a little bit. We've been talking about that in other weeks, uh, not too long ago. But, but you're right. There's nothing that can separate you from God's love and grace. I mean, that brings peace. And this guy, Paul, that we talk so much about, the Apostle Paul, who wrote so much of the New Testament— when he mentioned in Roman at the beginning of Romans chapter 8 that Joel just referred to, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, you know, you, well, you, your works can't condemn you. There's, there is no condemnation, none for those who are in Christ Jesus. Before Paul said that, just shortly before he said it in the previous chapter, he gave the example of trying to follow the commandments written in stone. And he used one as an example and it was coveting, thou shall not covet. And what was the result of that for Paul? Paul said, by trying to follow that commandment, the more I tried to follow it, the more coveting took place, all kinds of coveting. Um, and that's the result of the commandment. And Adam was a great example of that. Forget about the 613 that the Jewish people couldn't keep. Long before that, we had one guy created out of perfection, who is given one, one, (laughs) O-N-E, one commandment, and he couldn't keep it. And it brought death. And that's what the ministry of the law was that came through Mount Sinai. It was a ministry of death and condemnation. So when you hear us talk about this stuff, those of you who are kind of new to this, we understand we've been there, we've crossed that bridge, we've done that, and we've got more bridges to cross, by the way. We, we understand that this can be so different from much of the church teaching that you've had. And look, um, we're, we're not saying that works aren't important. I right. heard about an old friend of mine who's going through a very difficult time right now. I don't even want to give a hint as to what it's about, but Suffice it to say, made some bad choices and is now suffering the consequences in this life of some of those choices. So good works are a great thing, but it's it's God working in and through us. See, it's it's the difference between the ministry of death and condemnation that was based upon our efforts, the the human effort, uh, which led to self-righteousness and not true righteousness, not the righteousness of God. Uh, compare that to this this great contrast that we have that Paul especially talked about in Galatians chapter 5, walking by the Spirit, the ministry of the Spirit that he talked about in 2 Corinthians 3, comparing it, contrasting it to the old ministry of death and condemnation. The ministry of the Spirit is better. It has glory where the other does not anymore. It's, it's a glory that surpassed the old way of, of works and commandment keeping. And this fruit of his spirit flowing through us occurs apart from our efforts. It occurs apart from the law, separate from that. And, and we're, we're made righteous and we're justified justified apart from the law, Romans chapter 3. So all of these things, keep in mind, it's not about you. Now, we have been created in Christ Jesus for good works, as we've talked about recently. But keep in mind, since we have nothing to boast— not good, bad, or ugly. We have nothing to, to brag about except God in us and us in him. And uh, boy, that's something we, we could get into here too. But I, I know we're, we're going to be running a little bit short on time for this podcast. But uh, one thing I would just want to circle back to here real quick, cause we, we keep trying to get to forgiveness. And, <laughs> and this is a, one of those organic programs that we just started talking and what you heard is what you got. This was not 
pre-planned or, or any of that. But in, in Ephesians chapter 1, because we were in Ephesians chapter 2 recently, Ephesians chapter 1, Paul referred to believers as holy and blameless, redeemed by the blood, Ephesians 1, 4 through 7. And what did that result into? In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, and having made known to us the mystery of his will, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Yeah. So, you know, how big I am on on contrasts, and, you know, in him we have redemption through our good works. No, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. In him we have redemption through uh, avoiding sin, uh, through avoiding bad things and doing good things all the time. That's not how we have redemption. No, that's not what Paul says here. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. The book of Hebrews talks about this forgiveness, the one offering of Jesus. And I know we'll eventually work our way to Hebrews with all of this forgiveness stuff as well. It's the one offering of Jesus. He offered himself willingly, and it's through that offering that we have the forgiveness of sins. It's not through anything that we've done. And that's something, you know, he, he did it because he wanted to. He, he didn't like, well, I know, he didn't say, well, I know that if I do this, these people, they're still going to sin. They're still going to do some things that are unholy and ungodly. So maybe I, I don't know. No, he did it because he knew that through his blood, we would have the forgiveness of sins. We would be redeemed according to the riches of his grace. God's wonderful favor that he shows toward us, undeserving. You know, we're not deserving of it. We didn't do anything to earn it. He did it because he wanted to, because of the riches of his grace. And that's that's what God wanted to do. Even though he knew every single sin that we all of mankind would ever commit. And you you think about the trillions and trillions of of sins that have been committed over the course of human history. The one sacrifice, the one offering of Jesus took care of them all. So you think that your sins, you know, some of your sins might be big. They might not be, uh, in, in according to your own eyes. But the sins of humanity, Jesus, his blood took care of it all. And again, it was according to the riches of God's grace. It was, it was what he wanted to do. And so we have peace with God because of that. And Colossians 1 also talks about this forgiveness that we have. Colossians 1, 14, Paul says a very similar thing, talking about how God has delivered us from the power of darkness. So we were under the power of darkness, and God delivered us from it and conveyed us into the the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins forgiveness. It's a big issue. We need to talk more about it. We'll be spending some more time talking about it. I hope you'll stick with us. This is encouraging for me, and I hope it's encouraging for you as well. So stick with us on the Growing in Grace podcast. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.